I think we've all probably had times when there's been something that we've really wanted to believe, but we just couldn't quite get there. For survivors of childhood trauma, there are so many experiences like this, but oftentimes we don't even allow ourselves to acknowledge that we really want to believe it. And then what happens when you want to believe it, but you don't? It can feel really defeating to have that experience. So today I want to talk a little bit about holding on to the desire for that thing, whatever that is, and staying with it instead of just kind of feeling that sense of hopelessness or defeat. Welcome. I'm Peggy Oliveira. Thank you for joining me. I've been sharing a lot of short videos, shorts on YouTube, TikToks, that sort of thing. And one of the comments that comes up fairly often is something along the lines of, I want to believe it. I wish that were true. It just isn't. Or I just can't. I'm not there yet. Can you relate to any of that? Like hearing an affirmation and wishing that you could believe in that. And then when you don't, when you recognize that you don't believe in it and then you reinforce an idea that you'll likely never be able to believe in it, that it will never be true for you, it certainly doesn't feel very encouraging for continuing on this journey. So let's talk a little bit about what to do, how you can kind of navigate that challenge, because I don't want you to stop paying attention to those types of things. I want you to practice leaning into them, opening to being able to believe in the possibility. So um, I can't think of a specific one that I've shared recently for this to be the case, but sharing different things like um, that the shame is not yours and it never has been, that you are worthy of everything that you desire, um, that you're capable of achieving the things that you want to in your life, that you are always more than enough. These are some of the things that I share quite often, sometimes in different ways, but the ideas are basically the same. And I know for many of you, when you hear something like that, whether it's me or somebody else, that you don't yet believe that. You don't believe that it's possible for you. You might be able to see it for other people, but you can come up with all the reasons why it can't be true for you, why it might never be true for you. Even if you're not aware of what those reasons are or that you are coming up with them, they're there. That's how our mind works naturally. So you hear me talk a lot about this healing journey being a process and a practice because everything about it is both of those, th th those two things. Everything. It's part of the process and it is a practice. So when you see something or hear something, like a simple affirmation or a reminder. I refer to them often as little reminders because it is a reminder. It's a reminder of something that is real and true. You just likely have forgotten it because there was a part of you that would have believed it before the world taught you something different. So it is a reminder, it's a remembering of the truth. One of the things that's really important is to do this practice intentionally. So what I mean by that is like if you're scrolling through social media and you see some sort of positive quote or post or something like that, in your mind, whether you're aware of it or not, if you don't believe in yourself, let's say you see something that says you are more than enough. In your mind, immediately, there's going to be resistance to that. 
You might even feel something in your body, but there's going to be a thought that counteracts that. So it might just be, no, you're not. It might be something much more elaborate that goes into all the details as to why you're not. It might be more a feeling that you notice, and it could be a variety of feelings. It might progress from one feeling to another in a matter of just a few seconds. You might go through like five different feelings. But this happens automatically. When you don't believe in yourself, when you don't trust yourself, and you see something like that, that's how your mind works. And this is why affirmations by themselves don't work. And I've done a video about this, and I'll share a link in the description. Um, so that's what tends to happen. It also happens if somebody actually verbalizes that to you. So you could be having a conversation with somebody, whether it's a friend or a therapist, and internally, there's an immediate reaction to that. So not only does it negate the thing that you're hearing or reading, but it reinforces the belief that you hold as to why it's not true for you. So it gives more energy, more power to that belief. So what do you do? When you're intentional and you're scrolling through social media, or you just happen to hear something, read something, when you see something like that, take a moment and notice what is present for you. Notice how you responded to that, either in thought or in reaction in your body. What came to mind? What rebuttal did you have to it? Did you come up with all the so-called reasons why it can't be true? Did you immediately dismiss it and say something to yourself along the lines of, it's not meant for you, or they wouldn't say that to you, they're just saying that to everybody? These are the kinds of things that we say to ourselves over and over again, which is why it's so hard to dismantle the core beliefs. But we can't take in new beliefs until we create space by dismantling the old beliefs. And this practice that I'm talking about right now is one of the ways that we can do that. So noticing what happens in that moment. And then without judgment, recognizing it, so you acknowledge that this is what came up for you. No judgment. This is really important because if you judge yourself for the thought that happened or that you can't just take it in, so to speak, you're reinforcing that belief as well as probably some other false belief that you hold about yourself as well. So now I want to be clear, this is a practice because it is natural for you to dismiss whatever that thing is. It is natural for you to then judge yourself for how you responded to it. That is what is natural. Not healthy, but natural. So when you do not judge yourself and you can recognize what has come up for you, you're giving yourself a little space between the thought and the confirmation. So instead of having the, the what you read, you are more than enough, the thought, no, I'm not, and then the reaction, feeling bad, or feeling numb, or dismissing it completely. But oftentimes it does actually have an effect on how you feel. You may not be able to connect the dots to it. It may not be significant, but it often does have at least a little bit of an effect on how you feel. So when you take the time to do that, you're creating space between that initial thing that happens and ultimately how you feel. And as you create space in that, you can stop the momentum or decrease the momentum of the amount of energy that you take in from that. So the reinforcement, you decrease a little bit of that reinforcement. It's not necessarily going to feel different to you at the time, but when practiced intentionally over time, the process, it makes a difference. 
and it's very incremental. You're not going to suddenly notice one time that you do it what a huge difference it's made. At least generally speaking, that's the case. But what you will notice is whether it's a month later or six months later or maybe a couple of years later, and this is mostly just because you're not necessarily consciously thinking about it. But when you do think about it, if you practice this pretty consistently, you will recognize a significant difference in where you are that six months later, whatever it is, and where you were when you first started recognizing it. Now, I can't guarantee that because there are a lot of factors that go into all of this, but the intentionality is such a significant piece of this. And this is partly why it's a practice, because to be intentional around something like this, we have to practice being intentional. We have to take moments to pause and think, to understand, to recognize, to do things a little bit differently. And in that kind of pause, in that space that you're giving yourself, kind of decreasing that momentum, you are opening, you're creating that spaciousness to allow something different in. And that is ultimately, now I'm kind of sim certainly oversimplifying this, but that is ultimately how we get rid of the old beliefs and create space for the new beliefs that happen to be truth. It's not just some idea that you come up with that you want to believe. It is the truth. The other piece of this is that when you are intentional, if you can give yourself the space to really just sit with it for a few moments, or maybe longer, maybe even journal a little bit, let's use that example again, you are more than enough. You can then take some time to think about, is it possible? And I've talked about this in another video too, and I can't remember right now which video that is. But is it possible that I could be more than enough? That I'm already enough? Just You're just asking yourself, is it possible? And the answer is always going to be yes. And the reason that I say that, or the reason that I think it might help you to be able to believe in this is because when you think about the people that you care about in your life, maybe even when you think about other trauma survivors that you're aware of, are you able to believe that for them? Are you able to believe that for somebody else they are enough, even when there are things they can improve upon, even when they haven't succeeded at everything they've ever tried in their life? Um, even when they make mistakes, even when they're not perfect, whatever it is, are you able to believe that they are enough as they are? Are you able to accept them? Are you able to love them? Are you able to respect them as they are? And I'm sure the answer is going to be yes, that there is somebody in your life that that can be true for, or somebody that you're aware of, that you can see that that is true for them, that you believe that that is true for them. So if it can be true for all of these other people, why would it not be able to be true for you? Now, I know that you're going to come up with all the reasons why you believe it can't be true for you, but it can be true for everybody else. But some of those things that you're thinking about, you're going to separate yourself in some way. You're going to find something that is somehow pretty different about them than about you. Or even if there is some similarity there, for example, when it comes to being a survivor of childhood trauma, one of the things that will often come up or something similar to this is, well, of course it's true for them because they didn't cause what happened to happen to them, but I did. Well, that's not true. You didn't cause what happened to you to happen either. 
And if you can believe that every other childhood survivor trauma did nothing to cause what happened to them to happen, doesn't it have to be at least possible that that could be true for you as well? That you did not do something to cause your trauma? Because those other people have believed the same thing that you've believed. They have believed, and maybe still do, that they're different because they it's their fault that it happened. But for you, if they're looking specifically at you, it wouldn't be your fault because of the same reasons that you're saying it's not their fault. So it's about recognizing the possibility. And I didn't know that I was doing this. I don't know where it came from. Um, but I wasn't even actively like working with a therapist or anything at the time, I don't believe. But this was a huge, huge piece of being able to begin to accept things that might be true about me that I had never even considered could possibly be true. And I'm just talking about being somebody that somebody could love, being a good enough mom, being good enough to be a social worker, whatever it was. But I started thinking about that idea. Is it possible that it could be true? Is it possible that my husband really could love me? And that took me a while. And what helped me believe that that could be true is that I was able to think about, well, I love him and he's not perfect because nobody is and I can still love him. So could it be true that even though I'm far from perfect and I thought I had all kinds of flaws and I do have all kinds of flaws, could it be true that he could still love me? And at first I didn't believe it, but I kept thinking, is it possible? Is it possible that he could? And yes, the answer was yes, it could be possible, even though I could come up with all the reasons why he wouldn't, why he shouldn't. Was it possible? Yes. Was it possible that I could finish school and that I could be good at what I did? And those are two separate things. <laughs> um, was it possible that I could be good at what I wanted to do? That I could make a difference? Well, I didn't believe it. A big part of me was saying no when all the reasons why I couldn't. But there was also a part of me that said, is it possible? Yeah. Maybe it is possible. And when we allow for the possibility that it could be true, we open that door because up until then, that door is closed. It is locked tight and that key is nowhere to be found because all we have ever believed is that it is absolutely not possible for us. How we're so different than everybody else and why it can be true for others, but not true for us. Is it possible? Because realistically, how could it be possible for everybody else in the world, but not possible for you? It's kind of magical thinking. So when you recognize that and you ask yourself, is it possible that maybe I really am enough for somebody to have as a friend for somebody to love that I am enough to be good at what I want to do. Is it possible? Yes, absolutely. And that is the door that you open and you eventually walk through. I know how hard it is to believe or to accept something that you don't yet believe. I fully get it. 
And I know how it can hurt to feel that disappointment or that heartbreak when you think that that will never be available to you. But the goal isn't to avoid those things that are possibilities for you. The goal is to open to those possibilities, to be able to see yourself in the way that others do, to trust in yourself the way that you deserve to be trusted. so that you can believe and trust in your ability to create the life and the connection that you desire. All of that is possible, whether you're able to believe it now or not, but you ultimately get to a place where you can believe it, feel in your body, and trust that it's possible. You get there by moments, intentional moments of allowing for the possibility. Is it possible you're enough? Absolutely. Is it possible you are worthy? Absolutely. Is it possible it wasn't your fault? Without a doubt. Well, it wasn't your fault, but for you, just starting with, Is it possible it wasn't your fault? Absolutely. Do you blame anybody else for what happened to them? Any other child? Then it has to be possible that you're not at fault either. So while you may not be able to fully take in whatever the message or reminder or affirmation is, Give yourself the space to consider, could it be possible that it could be true for me too? And the answer will always be yes. Take a moment and just let yourself take a deep breath and take that in. Feel that possibility. Let that energy move through your body Try to let yourself lean in to the truth of what I have shared here. Let yourself take in the possibility that all of this is meant for you too. I'd love to hear from you. What came up for you as you listened? Thanks so much for watching. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe and click the bell for notifications. I'll look forward to seeing you next time.